Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our pediatric dentistry series. In this video, we're going to talk about primary tooth anatomy. So the biggest thing to know about primary teeth is that they have thinner enamel than their permanent tooth counterparts. We're talking about maybe one millimeter of enamel thickness versus two millimeters of enamel thickness for permanent teeth on average. Also, the enamel is more uniform in depth around the tooth, whereas for a permanent tooth, it could be a little bit more variable, depending on where you're at. Additionally, the dentin layer is thinner in primary teeth as well. So this means a couple of things. If the enamel and the dentin are thinner, then the pulp is naturally going to be larger in comparison. Also, because these teeth have thinner mineralized layers than permanent teeth, they're more prone to caries and tooth wear, and also to pulp exposure when preparing them for restorations. Having thinner enamel also means the tooth appears more white. Note the pearly white tint of these three primary teeth, as opposed to the more yellowish tone of this permanent molar and that's due to an increased translucency with a thicker enamel layer. So if we look at the cross sections down here, we can appreciate the difference in direction of the enamel rods. For a permanent tooth, the rods are, they tend to be perpendicular to the dentin at the DEJ, and so near the cervical third of the tooth, these, these enamel rods start to dip down in a gingival direction. Whereas in primary teeth, the enamel rods point up occlusally in this direction. And that's important when thinking about the differences in tooth anatomy between these two. Also note the presence of a cervical bulge. This is a prominent cervical ridge, especially at the primary first molar. So we can look right here, and this part that bulges out at the mesiofacial component is the cervical ridge, what I like to call the cervical bulge. Also, the roots of primary teeth are more divergent. You can appreciate in this drawing and over here how the roots diverge quite a bit more than they do in permanent teeth, which tend to be a bit more parallel or even convergent. And there's also a small or absent root trunk. That's the area between the CEJ and the bifurcation of the tooth. In the primary teeth, it's a lot smaller or absent altogether. And also important to note, these primary teeth tend to be wider mesiodistal and shorter in size gingivally than their successors, their permanent tooth successors. All right, so those are some high yield facts to know about primary teeth. And the helpful thing here is that a lot of these things, bigger pulp, whiter, and other things that we talked about have to do with them having thinner enamel. So that's definitely the thing to know from this slide. All right, so let's go through each primary tooth in order and in sequence here, and we'll talk about the high yield facts that you need to know for the board exam for each of these teeth. For consistency's sake, the mesial side of each of these teeth will be on the right for all these images. The distal side will be on the left. So for the primary maxillary central incisor, this is the widest anterior mesiodistal tooth. So of all the anterior teeth in the primary dentition, this is the widest mesiodistally. It's the only anterior tooth where its width is greater than its height. And this is actually true for both dentitions. So of all the anterior teeth in both the primary and the permanent dentition, this is the only one where it's wider than it is taller. So that's pretty cool. It also has prominent labial and lingual cervical ridges. We can see the labial cervical ridge right there. The primary maxillary lateral incisor. Luckily for us, no high yield facts here, so we'll keep moving on. The primary maxillary canine 
is the widest anterior tooth in a facio-lingual direction. So that's going in and out of the screen. So of all the anterior teeth, the primary maxillary canine is the widest facio-lingually. Its mesial cusp ridge over here is greater than the distal cusp ridge in length. And that's true of the maxillary first premolar as well. The cusp tip, as a result of this difference in length, is offset to the distal. Remember, mesial is on the right, distal is on the left. It also has a longer and sharper cusp than the mandibular canine, and even its successor, the permanent maxillary canine. All right, next we're gonna go to the molars. There's a lot of facts to know about the molars, so we'll spend most of our time on these. I love these illustrations from pocketdentistry.com, but note that all the molars are going to be displayed from the lingual or the palatal view. So if we look down here from the occlusal view, the crown resembles the maxillary first premolar with an added small distal component over here. So a great way to remember this tooth is that the maxillary first premolar is the tooth that will eventually replace this primary tooth. So it's cool that it resembles it in some way. From the, from the occlusal view, you might be able to appreciate this prominent uh, cervical bulge that we talked about a little bit earlier in the video. And you can really see it pretty good from the occlusal view, how it sticks out like that. And you can't fully appreciate this from the lingual view, unfortunately, but the CEJ dips more on the mesial half of the tooth than on the distal half. And that's in order to make room for this cervical bulge. This is also true for the primary mandibular first molar as well. The three root form resembles the permanent maxillary molars. So having a palatal root, mesiofacial and distofacial, or mesiobuccal, distobuccal roots is the same kind of structure, the same kind of arrangement that you'd see in the maxillary molars in the permanent dentition as well. All right, let's move to the maxillary second molar of the primary dentition. This is the widest primary tooth in the facio-lingual direction. This crown resembles the permanent maxillary first molar. So this one's not representing so much the its successor, but it's more representing the tooth that's gonna be right next to it. So in the transition, the mixed dentition, you're gonna see this tooth right next door to this primary maxillary second molar. Or I should say, you'll see this tooth right next door to the permanent maxillary first molar. And how does it resemble that tooth exactly? Well, it has a cusp of carabelli on the mesiolingual side of the tooth. And it's actually the only primary tooth with a cusp of carabelli, as well as an oblique ridge and a distolingual groove. So these things are very unique to this tooth. The cusp of carabelli, again, is palatal to the mesiolingual cusp tip of the permanent maxillary first molar and also in this primary tooth. It's also the last primary tooth to erupt, which we know from our eruption pattern we went over in the first video in the series. All right, so that's enough about maxillary primary dentition. Let's go to the lower. So the primary mandibular central incisor is the smallest tooth in a facio-lingual direction. Like in the permanent dentition, it's also the most symmetric of all the teeth. Here, again, the mesial is still on the right, distal is on the left. Primary mandibular lateral incisor looks cool, but we have no high yield facts. And the same for the primary mandibular canine. So let's keep moving. Next, we have the primary mandibular first molar. And this is by far the most unique tooth in the entire dentition. It's the most unique and frankly primitive looking tooth. It doesn't look like any other human teeth 
It almost looks like a dinosaur molar because of how, how stretched out and wide it is in a mesiodistal direction. But if we look carefully, it looks like the second or the mandibular second premolar on the distal aspect. And maybe like if you squint your eyes, half of a mandibular first premolar on the mesial half. And it looks like they were smushed together to create this thing. So it's a very strange looking tooth. It has the most distinct mesiofacial cervical ridge or cervical bulge, which we can really appreciate from the occlusal view. And it also has the most distinct transverse ridge coming across here, kind of where the two smushed premolars meet together. It's the most difficult primary tooth to restore. As you could imagine, there's all these prominent ridges and like this transverse ridge here, and that cuts right through the center of the tooth and can make an occlusal preparation rather challenging. The CEJ dips more on the mesial half resulting in an S-shaped cervical ridge. Now, like I alluded to before, this is the same thing we see in the maxillary first molar in the primary dentition. Again, we're looking from a lingual view here, so you can't really appreciate it, but take my word for it, the CEJ kind of dips down like this to accommodate this large cervical bulge. It has a distal triangular fossa right in here, and it has this mesiolingual ice cream cone cusp, which is the highest and the sharpest cusp on this tooth. However, the mesiobuccal cusp is the largest in size of all the cusps. So sometimes the board exam will ask, which is the largest? And I would answer mesiobuccal, but if it says something like highest or sharpest, then that's pointing to the mesiolingual cusp. So I see sometimes a lot of confusion about that. So definitely take note of that so you can keep that clear if you get asked about that. There are also four cusps total and four pulp horns to coincide with, with each of those cusps. Also note that like in the maxillary dentition, the maxillary molars, we saw there was a three root form and here we see a two root form that's also consistent and resembles the permanent mandibular molars. All right, and we're up to our very last tooth, the primary mandibular second molar. This one is the widest mesiodistal tooth of all the primary dentition. The crown resembles a permanent mandibular first molar, except that the mesiobuccal, the distobuccal, and the distal cusps are nearly equal in size. Whereas for the permanent mandibular first molar, the distal cusp especially is a lot smaller. So it's kind of interesting that we saw this is also true for the primary maxillary second molar, where we had this is the one resembling the permanent first molar. And then same thing on the lower. This is the one that's kind of resembling the permanent first molar that's going to be erupting right next to it during the mixed dentition. So that's pretty cool. This one has five cusps, just like the permanent first molar, and two roots, where the mesial is a bit bigger with two root canals. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for more on dentistry. If you're interested in supporting this channel and what I do, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you to Michael Raja, Reb Boyd, Leonella Bunger, Zuhir Anani, David Jaden, Yanit, Isabella Caldis, Ali Benjdir, Jacob K, Badir Hefnawi, and all my patrons for their support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link will be in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.